So, this is a broad overview of what we know as the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. Um, I put this into a diagram, and if there's one thing that I'm going to encourage you to learn and to study at the end of this seminar, it's this slide. We can reduce it all down into one easy little graphic. When we're looking at the idea of endocrinology or reproductive endocrinology, the best analogy that I've ever come up with that makes this accessible and simple is to think of this as like having a series of light switches and you're moving through rooms in a house. So we think of this as one room, we think of this as another room, and we think of this as a third room. And let's say it's dark. We're in this room and we want to move to that room. We have to turn the light switch on. And when we get into this room, we want to move to the next room. So we turn another light switch on. But then when we get to this room, we realise that we don't need the switches on in the other rooms. So we duck back and we turn them off. In the world of medical science, we call this a positive and negative feedback loop. And what that means is that the body sends a message to the next gland, the gland responds to that, which sends another message, and it becomes a cycle. It's a self-regulating cycle. It happens instantaneously. At least it should if there's no obstructing pathology in the way. So this is how the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis works. It's a series of lights on and lights off. So the process of menstruation or the creation of a menstrual cycle starts in the hypothalamus. It releases a hormone, GnRH, gonadotrophin releasing hormone. Gonadotrophin releasing hormone turns on a light switch and the light switch lights up the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then produces two principal hormones and we're going to examine all these hormones in much more depth. This is just to give you the overview. Follicle stimulating hormone, otherwise known as FSH. Luteinizing hormone, otherwise known as LH. These hormones switch on another light switch and that light switch turns on the ovaries. And the ovaries, in response to FSH, start to produce the follicles, which produce estradiol. Estradiol being one of the types of estrogen. The ovaries also produce progesterone. So, with the coming of each of these hormones, there's a plus sign, which turns on the next gland. And then with the presence of these hormones, there's a minus sign, which turns it off. And then when the body turns it off, it recognises that it's switched it off and it self-regulates and it goes, oh, hang on a second, we need to turn it back on again. So it starts the process all over again. So the fluctuation of these hormones varies in timing across the menstrual cycle. And we'll, we'll look at that as we go through. But these, it's basically this mechanism which underpins the regularity and the predictability and the success, if you like, of that so-called 28-day lunar cycle. And if there's a problem in the timing or the, the building of the lining or the volume of blood, it will always, in a biomedical sense, come back to this diagram. And in order to find out the source of the problem, you have to start where it ends and work your way back. And where it ends is actually where it begins, and that's menstruation. So technically, menstruation is seen as being the start of the cycle. But from a clinical point of view, we're asking questions of the menzies, which is the culmination of this entire process. So just to reiterate, if there's one thing that you're going to remember and take home from the weekend, learn that and hang everything off this diagram. Because it's a nice, simple way of being able to just categorize where a pathology might be sitting.